Hey, Craig Cuddle from Nature Reliance, cool guest instructor with DanceDepot.com. Want to show you today how to use some of the knots that we've been talking about in, in practice. So what we're going to do here is in miniature form show you how to use a cinch strap and we'll find a couple other knots and a couple other ways to utilize this rope to do some really cool things. So first thing I did is I've got two half hitches right here and let's say that that is on the other side of the Jeep and I wanted to cinch a canoe down or I had gear on top and I wanted to cinch it down. One of the things that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have in essence a pulley system so that you can pull hard on the rope and get it as tight as it can possibly be. This simple little knot right here is called a canoeman's hitch or sometimes called a trucker's hitch. I canoe a lot and paddle a lot so I call it a canoeman's hitch. So all you want to do is take your rope, fold it back on itself and take the bottom portion of your rope pull it back through that loop and you've got a canoeman's knot here and basically what you do is once you've got your gear stored on top and you've got this near the top of your gear you bring your rope up bring it down through that loop and then you can start to cinch this up and this will pull everything very tight and you have leverage to help you do so again I've just got it tied to the handle of my Jeep right here just as a means of displaying this but once you get this really tied as tight as you want it to be, you simply grab this and pinch it off. Pull your knot back through. That's an overhand knot. And now you've got basically a stopper knot holding all this very tight. So what we have that we're going to do now is we're going to show you what's called a Prusik knot. It's one of the coolest knots out there as far as I'm concerned. But uh, uh, it's real useful. It's an incredibly useful knot. Um, basically what you can do is any length of rope that you have, it's already set up whether, and right now I've got this set up just between two trees to demonstrate what it is that we're gonna do, but you could have a rope or string or cordage or whatever it might be that's tying down tent stakes and you need to tighten those up so you have a Prusik knot on that pulls down and stays taut. So basically what you have in this particular case, and this is, this is good for uh, self-rescue and stuff of that nature hanging off of a rope, and basically you have a length of rope that is comfortable for you to use and you simply wrap it back on itself and so I think we got the camera close enough where you can see that so all I did again was I have the rope the loop itself and I just bring it back on itself and so what we have here is the beginnings of a Prusik. Now what you'll see is that if it's perpendicular and straight up and down, this slide's really easy, but it starts to get taut if I turn this at an angle, turn this, this rope at an angle. It's not gonna be enough if you just do it like that. So what you need to do is take it right through again. You're basically doing the same thing. You wanna keep all these pieces of rope neat and in rows. So now I have one, two, three, four pieces, one loop around. And again, I can loosen this up and it slides real easy along the rope. However, I get it taut and pull at an angle, it doesn't want to slip. It slipped a little bit more. So the more of these that I add, the tighter this is going to get. This works even better when the rope that is currently black here is smaller than their blue and white rope. So now I've got multiple pieces and again, keep them together, it slides, but get them taut, pull at an angle, and this is not gonna slide along this rope. So that is a Prusik knot and pretty useful knot. And again, if I had this hanging way up there and and I'm not saying I want to climb a tree, but let's say I have a rope hanging down, down a steep bank and I'm going down a bank to get water or something. I can tie a quick Prusik into the knot and utilize this to climb back up. I'll pull myself up, pull myself up, pull myself up the hill, get there, get steady, push the knot up as far as I can go, climb myself up, climb myself up, and any number of things. Uh, cavers and explorers and climbers will do this a little bit more technical, but again, that's I want to emphasize for you again, that's not my purpose here. This is just basically camping and survival and useful knots that you can use in the woods. When I was setting up the rope to demonstrate this Prusik, 
I realized that I don't think I showed a slit knot on a half hitch, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you that here too, because this is another useful knot. So basically, what we've got here is we wanna get this real tight, and we wanna tie our half hitch in it like we did before. And I think what I did before is I just took it all the way through and showed that to you. And that's a good knot, don't get me wrong. But uh, another useful tool here is to do the same thing, take it back through. And instead of bringing the working end of the knot all the way through, just bring a bite. So I'm taking the rope through, basically making a loop and pulling that back through. And now I have basically the same exact knot. It's gonna have the same strength, but when it's time to pull it up, it's ready to go rather easily. And you can do that with almost any knot. You can have a bite that you stick in instead of the working end. That way it slips out and pulls rather easily out so that you're ready to go and move on whenever it's time to go. Here's another useful tool for rope. I, I grew up doing this because I grew up doing reenactment events and sleeping in teepees and stuff like that. But basically we're gonna make a clove hitch and I think I showed you on another video how to make a clove hitch, but here's another way to go about doing that. You just make a loop and then you make another loop and you put the second loop behind the first and you slide it down on a pole. That way if you have the top of a pole, you can do that. If you don't have the top, then you just do it the way I did before because maybe the tree's too tall, right? So. Uh, you put your clove hitch on there and you get two more pieces of wood and you basically do what is obvious, which is just wrap it. If I can get it all untangled, wrap it around, keeping these straight. And then, I'm not going to cut my rope because I like this rope, but um, you would take, you would cut your rope or your paracord, or if you had paracord, you could wrap it around more upon itself. You know, that way you don't have to cut it because I hate to cut rope and string if you don't have to. And tie another clove hitch right here, and you simply got a nice little tripod. This is how we built uh, teepees together back when I was doing reenacting events. You basically set this up and then you take your other poles if you're not aware of the way uh, this was done is you'd have three base poles and then you lay your other poles in here and then you lay your teepee material around the poles but basically this right here can provide a tripod to hang gear off of uh, to cook over a fire to boil a bottle of water over a fire and all you need is some sticks and some string so this is pretty simple if you don't have a rope or a paracord and you don't want to waste it, then you can tie this with grass, you can tie this with vines, you can do anything. You can tie it with anything except poison ivy vines. Stay away from that, obviously. But then you have a tripod, and this is incredibly stable, really. And uh, real simple to make and really easy to take down and take apart. So there you have some pretty common uses and ways to use knots. And... Um, We'll, we'll probably do some more of these. I just want to get started and get some basics out there because those are the ones, the ones that I've shown you are the ones that I use repeatedly all the time. And uh, I think you'll find them pretty easy to do and pretty easy to use. Um, obviously, we could come in here and make a video, and we may do make a, a real uh, detailed video of you know, 20, 30 knots. But really, when it comes down to it, you need to know two or three knots, and you need to know those really well. So uh, that's why we want to show you these the way that we did. So until next time, I hope to see you on or off the trail. Mm -hmm.